In this video, I'm going to review the Blockwatch's website, stack it against the competition, and hopefully inspire you to create better web designs and make more money by selling higher quality websites. So if you want to know whether this website passes my truly professional website test assessment, make sure you watch until the end when I will reveal its grade and income potential. Hello, I'm your host Casino. I'm the Digital Alchemist and in this new series, the goal here is not to focus on flashy websites that require an army of designers and developers to build. Nope. But instead, the idea is to focus on one website design that could be created by one single person or by a very small team. And this in order to inspire you and help you assess the quality and potential income of a website. So today I'm going to focus on the Blockwatch's website. So I found this website on Web Design Inspiration or on Site Inspire, and it's this website right here. And just so we're on the same page, here is how I'm going to proceed. I will assess this website over four topics. First impressions, identity, content, and technical. Each topic will be noted on five points and the final assessment will be noted on 20 points. Now, please know that this is my subjective assessment and not the universal truth, but I've been creating websites for a living for many years and I have quite some experience doing that. So let's start with the first impressions that can be broken down into desktop, mobile, tablet, and versus the competition. Okay, so let's start with my impressions on the desktop. So while I did not get the wow effect, Still, it felt really nice, especially <laughs> with the current trends. So well-organized, beautiful website. You got this interaction and animation. We'll talk about that in a moment later in the video. One thing that got me confused is here. I started scrolling and I, it was like, yeah, nothing happens. Just, you know, okay, we get five lines of text and then I'm done. So what, do I need to click on shop here on top uh, in navigation? But as you continue scrolling, then it moves on to uh, some more things and I feel like they should have made it easier because I had to scroll many times before I could uh, get to this part and actually the first time I went to the website I never knew that this part even existed so all in all a very good first impression but I should just take care of making the scrolling smoother okay next let's take a look at the tablet version and from the get-go you get a message telling you please rotate your device for a better experience so either it means that they really crafted a beautiful experience for the tablet or that they didn't want to bother with the tablet and they want you to watch things just like on the website so let's do it and yeah it looks really like the website you can't really um so i'm mimicking if i was using three fingers to go left and right but it doesn't move whereas let me go back on top here on the desktop version when i hover over elements it just goes sideways so here on the tablet you can click on the arrows and then get kind of the same effect but it would be nicer if you could use three fingers and just go sideways now for the rest the scrolling works way better because you don't get that uh, um, effect with the five lines of text so in that perspective it's better here on the tablet now let's move on to the mobile and as I start scrolling, can I? No, same thing. I can't move with three fingers uh, left and right. So I need to click on the arrow. And to me, it's kind of a missed opportunity. It would have been nice just using your fingers. But still, first impression is really good because yeah, the pictures are beautiful. The hero section is super clean. Uh, the colorful color palette works really well. Then you see design crafting in Switzerland it's like we've done a lot of Switzerland based websites on this channel lately uh, the colors are beautiful and yeah very first good impression on the mobile too okay now let's tack it against the competition so I went onto Google and I landed on this website so Flick Flack is a very known brand so this one looks good very kiddie like and you know it's kids watches so it kind of makes sense this one looks a bit boring the usual um, e-commerce website same thing for this one no real identity this one also a bit boring i mean the, the the watches i guess are nice when you look at watches for kids but i'm talking about the design of the website so this one yeah boring <laughs> sorry um even more boring Okay, you get the idea. So when you compare it with Blockwatch's website, definitely the Blockwatch's website has the upper hand. It feels way more 
crafted way more premium the level of detail and the identity is really great especially compared to the competition so for all these reasons for first impressions i'm going to give it a grade of four out of five okay next let's move on to the identity which can be broken down into the logo the colors the fonts and the style versus the target okay first let's take a look at the logo so it's a typographic logo and if you know anything about my channel you know i love typographic logos and this one looks good but i don't get the wow effect they could have customize the B for example or the O you know they could have played okay it would have been cliche the O as a analog watch could but it could have been the L could have been anything I think it could have played with the logo it feels a bit bare bones even though I know I've reviewed some typographic logos that had no elements but maybe the font was better but here I think like maybe they missed an opportunity um, with the logo especially when I look here on the cloud it's a different logo so the b is customized and the o also but here maybe it's not the right logo and if that's the case that's a mistake <laughs> should be consistent with your branding so i don't know or maybe they have variations not sure here next let's talk about the color palette and the color palette is beautiful okay usually i love minimal design and you know something a bit more how can I put that? Not with that many colors, but here it makes sense. It's selling watches, uh, especially I think it's targeted at kids. I think so. The colors are vibrant and beautiful. And just when you look at the watches, let me scroll back up. You got many colors, but the colors on the website look really great in my opinion. It works well with the target. It works well with the intention. Yeah, I had nothing to say. Beautiful implementation of a color palette, of a multi-color palette. Next, let's talk about fonts. So this one is type 1451LL. Ooh, maybe they do need branding for the name of the font. Um, or is it kind of a Helvetica? I'm not sure. So let's pick another one. Yeah, it's the same one. Let's scroll. Let's find more text. Yeah, it's the same one. Okay, here's the paragraph. Okay, here we got rent. So basically we got type 1451LL and rent. So two fonts throughout the website. And as you may know, it's always advised with a maximum of three fonts. Two is better. It looks really good. No more than three and two is great. So well done here. Next, let's talk about style versus target. Well, I think it's for kids. When you look at the watches, when you look at the colors, it really looks like it's for kids. So if that's for kids and you see here the pictures, that's for kids, then it works really well. Yeah, it's definitely for kids. Like all the pictures are with kids. So, okay, question solved. So it definitely works because the colors are vibrant, the color palette, the fonts, everything. It's really... If you're a kid, you like colorful things, well, most of the kids anyway. <laughs> I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, I used to love colorful things. And even growing up, I still like colorful things with good taste though. So I think it works really well for the target, even though the parents are gonna buy, but if the kids like it, they're gonna ask their parents. And if they do, mission accomplished. So for all these reasons, for identity, I'm going to give it a grade of four out of five. Okay, next, let's move on to the content topic, which can be broken down into navigation, quantity, quality, and funnel. Okay, so let's start with the navigation. And here on the desktop, as you can see, we got shop, about, and login. And then we got our shopping cart. So a very minimal navigation. And if you know anything about navigation on websites, it's always advised with a maximum of seven elements per level why just because the short-term memory doesn't cope with more than seven elements and don't ask me why so here well well done shop about and login is definitely less than seven and let's go here in the footer you can see we got more links but hey uh what they want you to do is to shop on the website they don't want you to just go and spend your time reading or clicking on all the links so all in all for the main navigation works really well on the desktop. Okay, next let's take a look at the navigation on the tablet. And it's exactly the same as on the desktop because we are in um, landscape mode. So same remarks. And last but not least, here is the mobile version. And when we click on it, we got this ripple effect. 
and then we got the same thing shop about login the buttons are big enough maybe they could have spaced the buttons um i mean the items vertically because people with big fingers that could be annoying especially when you got all this uh screen real estate because the navigation is really tiny but for the rest it works well open close clean it works next let's talk about the amount of content on the website as we saw only three elements in the main navigation and when you look at the store they got six watches that they sell so not that much content but not that you really need more uh, i see some websites either they have too little like there's nothing and it feels like it's you know it's an empty shell or they have tons of content overwhelming you with content all over the place so you want to find a good balance and here i think the balance is good let's uh click on one of the products to see the amount of content so it's typical regular uh, e-commerce website but and here i'm not about the quantity of content but I'm, i must say that it's beautiful i mean the the product page i think it's really clean and beautiful the way they present things yeah i really dig that okay but what about the quality of the content well as we just saw they got very nice pictures let me go back well as you can see first of all for the images the images were taken by a professional and you would expect no less from an e-commerce website but bear in mind when we took a look at the competition like this this okay it looks clean but it doesn't make you want to purchase it's just like a generic picture whereas here i don't know you can see the detail the lighting it really you know it looks gorgeous in my opinion plus with the colored backgrounds uh yeah really works now for the text not that much text but well written but once again you would expect no less so all in all quality of the content is really good maybe they should have used videos or maybe i didn't see it but it would have been nice to see uh the, the the products being used actually in video because video is king next let's talk about funnels or calls to action and from the get-go you get this really clean hero section uh, you see the title and then you see the shop now now maybe the button could have been in a different color than the text just so that it really acts as a accent color but i think because of all the colors in the watches they really had to draw your attention and it kind of works because the blue color here draws i mean drew my attention so it works so we get this main call to action and as we scroll down let's check play oh there is a video you know okay and for the rest we got another shot now so we do have some calls to action so well done so for all these reasons for the content i'm going to give it a grade of four out of five okay next let's move on to the technical side of things which can be broken down into speed dynamism interactions and the use of trends okay let's start with the speed so if i click on shop as you can see not the fastest of websites but not slow either so here it was way faster when i opened the product so let me go to the about page quite fast but do they have images or not okay it was fast because there's no image or maybe it's loading so let me refresh just in case okay so here it is we got giant b here then we get uh, some images okay now let's go back to shop and let me pick um this one here so as you can see actually it was quite fast so it was just from the home page to the shop that it felt a bit slowish let me try one more time no it goes way faster this time so maybe the cache is now working or maybe they're using a cdn also you never know as i always mention some companies are going to invest in the cdn so basically the website is going to be served from a server closer to the visitor of the website and if it's a local company there's no point in investing in a global cdn you would just pay for a cdn where for where your customers are and um 10 000 kilometers away from europe so if they don't invest in a cdn here it may be slower doesn't mean the website is slow next let's talk about dynamism so in other words does the website feel alive or flat as we just saw we got this animation and then here well we'll talk about this in a moment but the website very much feels alive now they should take care of this uh smooth scrolling issue or make it smoother but for the rest yeah it does feel alive things are moving but not all over the place 
you know, most of the time it's subtle. So all in all, yeah, it's uh, it doesn't feel flat at all. Next, let's talk about interaction. So as you start scrolling, there are many interactions. Things move when you go up and down. So those micro interactions are really interesting, especially in the case of an e-commerce website, because basically one of the purposes of micro interactions is to get the website visitor to commit to clicking somewhere and taking an action. Why? Because when you want them to take the intended action, like add to cart, like you see right here, they've already had some micro interactions. So that's the idea behind it. Doesn't always work, but it really helps. Next, let's talk about the use of trends. And one of the first trends we see is the gigantic text. And they've implemented this, but you know, with the good taste in my opinion, because sometimes it looks really ugly. Here, they got gigantic images, everything is gigantic. So that's definitely one of the main trends that's been implemented on this website. But it works really well in my opinion. Now I did experience a bit more issues with the speed as well as some issues with the smooth scrolling. That's not as smooth as it should be. So for all these reasons, for technical, I'm going to give it a grade of 3.5 out of 5. So at the time of reviewing this website, when we add all the grades, it adds up to 15.5 out of 20, which is a good grade. Knowing that I consider anything 14 and above a professional website that you can sell for a higher than average price. Okay, now let's talk about income potential. Now, a little disclaimer here. When we talk about income potential, of course, where you live really matters. Do you live in Switzerland or in Bangladesh, in the United States of America or in Romania? But if you factor in the e-commerce features, the photo production and the modern yet clean design, well, you could probably sell this website between 5 and 20K, depending on your sales skills. Here I'm talking in dollars or it could be euro depending on the conversion rate. But don't forget, some people would never be able to sell this website for more than 500 bucks. That would be the same quality, of course, but they wouldn't be able to sell more than 500 bucks, while others would sell it for a minimum of 100K. So it really depends on your sales skills. And like we saw a moment ago, it also depends on your location because $5,000 isn't the same thing in Los Angeles and in Bangkok. That's the hard truth. But I'm just giving you an average income potential. Now, of course, whether you create this website in six weeks, three months, six months, or a year is also going to determine if it's profitable or not. But let's say that the website did cost between five and 20K. Well, my guess is that the company would be really, really happy with the results, especially when you stack it against the competition. Now, how would I build it? Well, it doesn't really matter if you outsource the development, hand code it yourself, or use WordPress. Clients only care about end results and return on investment. Now, personally, I think I could build something similar with WordPress, Elementor Pro, affiliate link in the description, plus probably Jet Engine and WP Rockets, just to give you an idea of the main plugins I would be using. But of course, you could build this with Bricks, with Gutenberg or with the builder that you are most efficient with. At the end of the day, they're just tools. What matters is the end result. Okay, so today we reviewed a watches company's website, but which type of industry's website would you like me to review next? Please let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video and my work, please give it a thumbs up because it's really gonna help the channel and it doesn't cost you a dime. And if you want more web design goodness, consider subscribing and smashing the notification bell so that you don't miss anything. I hope that this video will help you become a better web designer and sell higher end websites. So I'll see you in the next one. And don't forget, I'm trying to build the content I wish I had when I got started. So I'll see you in the next one. And until then, take care and stay safe. Cut.